Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Raucous Caucus on Adelaide's own Channel 44! <laughs> This is the game show that puts a mirror up to the election and says, man, you're ugly. <laughs> and it's exciting times. We had yet another, deba another debate and it was very exciting. Um, not much different happened. Uh, you may not have even known it was on. Uh, it was 6 p.m. on a Friday night. <laughs> oh, and the idea being would that it would just hopefully attract the youth to politics. <laughs> it's good planning. <laughs> 6pm on a Friday. I was already three beers in or planning to get three beers in. Um, but it may have worked. Canberra's youth are already way too interested. 101% of 19 year olds are enrolled to vote. <laughs> And the ACT's Electoral Commissioner, good old Phil Green, has said, this does appear to be the most complete role we've ever had for the ACT. <laughs> I would hazard a guess and say it's pretty more than complete. It's, it's probably too complete, Phil. <laughs> um, but that's them. Uh, and Turnbull, hey? Guess who's coming to dinner? Oh. It's a homophobic Islamic cleric, hey? <laughs> But he fixed it though, he fixed it, it's all fine. Uh, yeah. Turnbull uh, said, we are a broad and diverse country and we respect the rights of gay Australians. Which is true. Um, he respects the ones that we've already got. <laughs> and Labor have launched their election campaign. Just now. <laughs> they've, they've just started it. Now. What are they doing, you know? Why you only start playing the game in the last quarter? Why? Oh, because once you start officially playing, you can't claim your expenses anymore. <laughs> so we paid for the boring bit. We could have skipped that bit. We didn't need it. You know, what happened? Well, we figured out Shorten has man boobs and a massive bonce. You know I mean? <laughs> Turnbull's got way too much cash that he apparently didn't spend on the election and Barnaby Joyce is a massive flog. <laughs> didn't need it. Tight shirts and stupid hats could have sorted that. So let's check out some very interesting people now with very little cash. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rockers Caucus! Two party preferred when one twenty-first just isn't enough. Pork barreling. Making bacon in snow tap. Absentee vote. When you can't decide between stomach crunches and a nice cup of Earl Grey. Let us decode this week's election with your host Laurie Bell and backstepping backbenchers Mike Klimczak and Pat McCaffrey. Recorded live at the Rhino Room in Adelaide, this is the Raucous Caucus. that brings the power back to the people then says, look with your eyes, don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Laurie Bell. Each week during the election campaign, two teams fighting for the left and right will battle it out in a vicious backroom spill here at the Rhino Room in the heart of Adelaide. And joining me, as always, are our wonderful team captains. For the left, here's a hotbed of union corruption. Please welcome <laughs> Pat McCaffrey. <laughs> love politics, yeah. uh, but even you have to admit this campaign's dragging on a little bit. Uh, have you got any tips on how to stay interested in the long game? Uh, cocaine and whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> there is a future in politics. Here, so. <laughs> and praying there won't be a banking royal commission for the right. Please welcome Mike Limsack. <laughs> where there's an army tank on display. Uh, has the election just got you eyeing it at the, at the top and just going, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, tanks are the only greens I will support. <laughs> 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 
Speaking of, uh, <laughs> each week our team captains are joined by a special guest from the world of politics and the media. Our first guest for the left is a member of the Legislative Council in South Australia. Please give it up from the Greens, Tammy Frank! <laughs> conference recently uh, calling for the state government to allow the cultivation of medical marijuana. Now, you do realise that wanting to enjoy WOMAD isn't a crime. <laughs> Green at the Greens. <laughs> and for the right, he's a comedian who's written two hit musicals and he's a regular contributor to The Spectator and he's rocking the finest English teacher beard this side of Bonsky. <laughs> Please give it up for James McCann! James, you followed up your hit show, Wolf Creek the Musical, with another hit, The Sound of Nazis. Are <laughs> <laughs> you worried that uh, your gear might offend some people? <laughs> you know, it never happened. I feel like I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> like I've spent enough time developing a personality that's going to be so good for when they come for me. <laughs> Uh, no, there were very offensive songs in those musicals, and they, and they were well attended. I guess the writing was just too good for anyone to uh, want to stop them. <laughs> stop them going to hear. James McCann, you can't buy tickets, he bought them himself! <laughs> to newspapers and even on social media. Politicians are always in our faces, but how well do we know theirs? Behind a puzzle, we've hidden the face of a well-known MP. Each correct answer gets a piece of the puzzle removed and a chance to guess who lurks underneath. Bonus points are up for grabs for early guesses. Teams, it's time to test your buzzers. Here we go. Now, guys, just remember, this is indeed a uh, Channel 44 community-based station. <laughs> so, here we go for the left. These are for you. Thank you. And for the right. These will be for you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, teams, here we go. <laughs> Question number one. The Australian hip-hop song, The King is Dead. The Herd. Oh. About John Howard losing the election and the seat of Ben along to Maxine McHugh. <laughs> and getting his ass played in Mandarin. <laughs> Should I keep going? No! Yes. <laughs> I don't know about you, Mike, but I'm feeling good about this week. Yeah! <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be all right, then I saw the socks. And like, I don't like the working man. Is the puzzle removed? Oh. No, uh, I, I cannot tell from no that. Idea. No idea. Okay, no. okay <laughs> so let's start. <laughs> Next question. Who was the leader of the Liberal Party at the 2010 election? <coughs> yes, boss. Do you mean uh, like at a state level or federal? Uh, or? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you said leader of the Liberal Party. Do you mean the oh, you know, candidate God, going James. for Prime Minister? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the head of the Liberal Party. <laughs> Oh, I didn't write the question. <laughs> oh, yeah. How you feeling about this week now, Pete? So I, feel, I feel like the reason this goes long is not going to be Laurie Bell. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm stuck in a Rain Man off. <laughs> Tony Abbott? Yeah! <laughs> well done, Tony Abbott. All right, let's, re let's reveal a piece. Oof, any thoughts, fellas? Okay. I am myopic and can't tell. Okay, great. <laughs> Question number three. According to recent polls, Team Xenophon is a chance to pick up which outback South Australia... <laughs> yeah, uh, Grey. Grey, yeah, the electorate of Grey. Well done. <laughs> Another piece, what do you think, guys? I can't see anyone. Do you want to take your ears not? Oh, let's just say Kevin Rudd. No. no? no. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. The Road to Ruin is an explosive account of the relationship between Tony Abbott and... <laughs> Oh, uh, it's his chief of staff, Peter Credlin? Oh, yeah, uh, but not the question. 
Does that mean we I get should, to... I shouldn't have buzzed in, it really, Tammy would have known. <laughs> <laughs> do we get to answer next? You do. Them? All right, well, we'll wait to hear that. <laughs> yeah. uh, name the journalist that wrote it. Nikki Sabah. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Still nothing? Nah. Great. This is going to be a quick game. Uh, which prominent Australian politician was involved in a drunken incident at Scores Strip Club in New York? <laughs> okay, we'll go for the right. Was it Jamie Briggs? <laughs> no, no, it, it was Kevin Rudd. It was Kevin Rudd. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. Let's it's, reveal another piece. Yeah, uh, yeah. Who's that? It's obviously Anthony Albanese, isn't it? It is! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, do not know why we're picking on Shorten's man boobs. <laughs> <laughs> that is harsh. Okay, guys, at the end of that one, we have the left on six points. <laughs> Democracy. It's a little bit like Facebook. You've got your real friends and then you've got your friends you've never really met but they always seem to argue with you and then you've just got that weird bloke that you don't remember friending who's always sharing David Avocado wolf memes. <laughs> Were you pointing at me? <laughs> In politics, those people are the independents. <laughs> Changes to voting Senate rules will make those wacky independents a thing of the past but here on the Raucous Caucus we're giving them a last hurrah. <laughs> tonight, as always, we're joined by a minor party wildcard who could decide tonight's winner if the scores are locked at the end of the show. Best of all, he doesn't even know what he's standing for yet. Give it up for Duncan Turner! <laughs> Yep. Weird mix. Uh, we're, <laughs> and we're taping this at night, so I guess I should just say good morning. <laughs> I'm in the middle of exams right now. Time has no meaning. <laughs> well, let's hope you're going to put that probing mind of yours to good use. In that envelope, you'll find out what your party is and what its policies are. What have you got? Uh, I am an alien desperately trying to pass as human in the Senate. <laughs> We are not a hive mind wearing the discarded skin of a man. Yeah, but what are you pretending to be? <laughs> That's a good point. What's your platform? Uh, uh, to cut all funding to CSIRO astronomy, especially to any project looking at Jupiter's moon of Europa. <laughs> to support the traditional definition of marriage as between one man and one woman and 10,000 sterile workers. <laughs> <laughs> and to ominously increase Australia's refugee intake to 40 million by 2032. <laughs> this is why you're not in the search for intelligent life. <laughs> Great to have you on board, mate. And just like a journey across the cosmos, it's a long haul ahead. So now it's time to duck to the loo because you are watching the Raucous Caucus. Back in a minute, we'll see you soon. <laughs> live from the Rhino Room in the heart of Adelaide. Now, after one round, our two teams are Patrick and Tammy on a solid six points. <laughs> and Mike and James are on two points. <laughs> this, is, this is because I have an investment property, isn't it? <laughs> Australian politician, you had a famous run-in with Paul Keating, is that right? It is indeed. What happened there? Well, it was one morning in uh, Glenelg and he was running for Prime Minister in a federal election and I was with some other students who went down and protested and he told me to go get a job. <laughs> <laughs> that was you? That was me. 
Do you ever like go back into his office and just Julia Roberts it and say, oh. big mistake? <laughs> I want to tell him one day because I've got like a crush on him, but it, was... <laughs> it just wouldn't work out. Okay, here we go. Rockers Caucus at night. <laughs> Most of us have trouble remembering who our local member is, so spare a thought for the Speaker of the House who has to remember 150 MPs. Now, no doubt they occasionally go a bit blank when the member for mate. Maitland uh, <laughs> is interjecting, so let's see if our teams can do any better. Pat and Mike, you will be given a list of politicians. Tammy and James will each have one minute to guess how many names on those lists are with clues that are given to them by their captains. But here's the catch. Team captains can't mention the name, position or party of their mystery politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just give all the points to Tammy now? <laughs> Each team has one minute on the clock. Patrick, here's your list. Here we go. Do we have anyone timing one minute? Oh, Independent! Yes. Good oh. for something. OK, here we go. Your time starts now. Uh, is taking on Tony Abbott in the lower house, ex-Australian Idol oh. host. Oh. Uh, taking on Tony James Abbott. James Matheson. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Ditch the Witch. Oh, Tony Abbott. Mm. Julia Gillard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, big, big giant fat man who was in Parliament. Clive Palmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Tintin, psychopath. Oh, um, Kevin uh, Rudd. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> swimming accident, lost at sea. Harold Holt. Yep. <laughs> Ditch the witch, but the other one. Oh, um, the one... Alan Bond. No, no, um, no. Like, <laughs> That's not even stop the I boats. Uh, ditch the witch. Tiny axe Abbott. attacks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tiny man wants to be prime minister. Giant head. Bill Short. Yep. <laughs> those charades. Mike, here are your politicians and your time starts now. Uh, um, likes chicks and is one. <laughs> A penny one bag. <laughs> Goes nice with mint jelly. Um, mental. Um, uh, has, has a name that rhymes with hacky. Um, you know this guy was being like, he's timed. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not good at this. One? I passed uh, that one. Okay, pass. Uh, okay, um, um, <laughs> um, uh, Midnight Oil singer. Uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> right. yeah. 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 Uh, fake, fake Twitter account. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hey, Tammy, over to you. That same poll also found that 17% of Aussies think that Turnbull was more likely than Shorten to do what? A. Ask for directions to a more marginal electorate. <laughs> B. Ask you to help him open a jar. <laughs> or C. Ask if you needed help with your renovations. <laughs> Um, well, I don't think it's I, I don't think it's going to be A, uh, just because I think the coalition is actually doing very well in marginal electorates. Um, so I think it's going to be either B or C. Well, they're what not are you doing thinking? so well in the safe electorates. Is their problem? Mm, um, I um, feel like we're losing the audience now, though. This is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting for us. But yeah. uh, I'm feeling C. I I'll go with that. Okay. You go with that. It is wrong. Oh. It is wrong. <laughs> Oh, my God, my heart rate. Mike and James, rounding out Essential's latest poll, see if you can eliminate the statistical bias in the following. 24% of Australians thought Malcolm Turnbull was more likely than his opponent to cook <laughs> what? <laughs> a. A good meal. <laughs> B. The books. <laughs> or C. The poor. <laughs> wow. Not C, the poor are kind of gamey all <laughs> That's not true. They've got, they're the fattest of all people. <laughs> I say that as a poor person who's quite fat. I, uh, I, think, I think, is this how it was phrased in the poll? Because no one's going to give someone a There could be some like, clever words like, right? in the books, mate. Yeah. Uh, a, a good meal. Oh, I'm thinking the books. <laughs> if we lose, it's on you. So let's do that. Are you going to go with We're the books? We're already losing. Go with the books. You're wrong! <laughs> it's a good meal! Oh! And finally, Bert and Tammy, here's one from left field. Roy Morgan Research last week put out an interesting policy paper. See if this sets off your political radar. According to Roy Morgan, the fastest way to end Australia's economic troubles is to A. Legalise recreational cannabis B. Strip baby boomers of their investment properties Or C. Move Canberra to South Australia uh, I feel like legalised recreational cannabis would be bad for the nation's productivity. Uh, Possibly bad for South Australia's yeah, economy. Yeah, that's true. Um, I wish I could do B. Um, <laughs> sorry, Mike. Um, <laughs> Mike wishes he'd done less A. <laughs> I think it's New Canberra to South Australia. Really? In bring some of the infrastructure and the departments okay. here, well, base been, them in right our state where so we far. need the jobs. Let's see how it goes, guys. It's C! <laughs> Apparently Adelaide is a much better choice for the nation's capital other than Canberra because it's not detached from reality. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, the city that makes frogs into cake and has a white Christmas parade in the middle of bloody summer. <laughs> and besides, there's plenty of other reasons to have the nation's capital here. Politicians won't be able to sling mud at each other because that involves drinking water. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Nick Xenophon, he wouldn't have to worry about driving his tiny car around all those little roundabouts. <laughs> Oh, look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> OK, guys, let's run to a score check. For the left, we've got 15 points. And the right, 8 points. <laughs> You're watching The Rockers Caucus. We'll be back before you can say, Mad as a cat ass. See you soon. <laughs> into the home straight. Our teams are Pat and Tammy on 15 points. <laughs> and Mike and James on 8 points. <laughs> and Duncan, 0 points. <laughs> now Tammy, your political career very nearly ended up getting cut short back in the 90s, didn't it? Well, I went to a job interview with Malcolm Turnbull, 
and he was the head of the <laughs> Republican movement and I wanted to work for the Republican campaign. And he invited me along and it was an Italian wine bar on Piri Street and I got there at about six o'clock at night on a Friday and there was a function on and he was doing speeches and three hours later I'd drunk a lot of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and while I was waiting at the bar and Darren Hinch was there, strangely enough, <laughs> which just added to the whole ambiance and it was full of Labor people and Malcolm's first question was, so Tammy, what's wrong with the Republican movement? At which point I said, look around the room. <laughs> You co-wrote the Fringe Smash hit Wolf Creek the Musical. Do you reckon you might get a follow-up thanks to Bob Catter's new election ad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any any ideas for some chirpy little songs for, for that number? Oh no, I like how did he get his hat up there in that tree? <laughs> I like Bob Catter. I think he's fun. I know he's like he like people say he's a homophobe who doesn't read any newspapers, but I think <laughs> he's, he's got like some chutzpah. We haven't seen much of him the last two years, he? except for, again, the, the time that he um, threatened to murder <laughs> two people. <laughs> Speaking of politicians with huge hats, it's now time to play! <laughs> Elections. They're basically like a big job interview. And if you want to make a good impression in the bush, it's all about donning the Akubra. Just make sure that the locals don't spot the price tag dangling off the back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, trust this ginger when I say it's got nothing to do with being sound smart. <laughs> it's all about blending in and hoping that the hat gets you over the line. And that's the aim of Akubra Matata. Our team captains have to sell a policy dud while being more Australian than a cocky that's been taught to speak by Pauline Hanson. <laughs> <laughs> Squawk, Muslim, smell weird! <laughs> Okay, Patrick, you're up first. Tonight, it's Medicare and why it should be sold. Take it away. <laughs> all right, all right, Pat, you've never been to the country before, but you travelled. It'll be fine. <coughs> <Okay>. <coughs> Hola. <laughs> You might have recently seen uh, some scandalous attack ads involving Bob Hawke suggesting that the coalition government has a plan to sell off Medicare. Well, I say about bloody time, right? <laughs> because for far too long, ordinary Australians such as myself, you know, uh, Chardonnay sipping, uh, theatre going, ABC Radio National listening arts patrons like myself, and indeed Malcolm Turnbull, have... <laughs> Ordinary Australians have been subsidising, right, the lifestyle choices of people we would consider to be the minority of Australians. You know, those overweight, beer-guzzling, boorish football fanatics. Uh, and, and trade eyes? <laughs> The, the other allegation that Bill Shorten made was that the coalition has a plan to Americanize the Australian healthcare system. Well, again, I don't think that this is a bad thing. Think of the benefits that would come from a more American Australia, right? First of all, there would be even less pressure to learn a second language. And, uh, <laughs> secondly, John Bon Jovi. And uh, thirdly, we would no longer have to accept responsibility for Rebel Wilson. <laughs> That was so Australian, Eddie McGuire is threatening to hold himself underwater. <laughs> now it's your turn. This time, with an awkward trip through the checkout. That's right, Mike, take it away with a tax on women's sanitary items. <laughs> really? Well, I'm going to hate this. <laughs> Well, like a, a lot has been said about um, taxing on tampons and, and pads, and uh, re regrettably we have had to reverse our decision. Yes, we changed our minds. No, we don't have to explain ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> as as a fiscally responsible government, we need to 
stop the leaks in the... We need to... We need to... We need to plug the holes in the budget. We need... Oh, we need Look, a lot has been said that this is a sexist tax. It is not. Men still need to pay GST on their tampons and pads. It is not. <laughs> no one is checking at the counter whether you are a man or a woman. Everyone must pay those. But to make it up uh, and to show our respect, because the support that it gives our economy, we can't live without the GST on these products, honestly. And the support it gives us, we, we have... We're introducing a new policy. We're having Anzac Day every 28 days now. <laughs> Just to, to, to commemorate the brave men and women that have shed blood for our country. <laughs> so, <laughs> see you on YouTube. <laughs> As an alien trying to pass as a human, <laughs> what stance does your party take on these issues? Well, on the one hand, my our people find all human bodily functions disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> we do need those bodies to be nice and healthy <laughs> and right for the pick, and I'm going to give it to the right. <laughs> Undeserved. Well, yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> and, and thank you, Duncan. Uh, we've heard what you said. We're just not going to listen to it. Um, <laughs> we'll, in fact, throw it out to the audience. Who here thinks the right heard it? like women can whistle, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> With that time of the month, I'm being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that, we have the left on 16 points! <laughs> and the right, 8 points! All of our latest debates, this election season, it's, it's been a bit too friendly tonight. <laughs> well, stuff that. It's time to sharpen your killer instincts for the final lightning round. Teams, hands on your buzzers. It's now your chance to make up the lost ground or uh, just bury your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen, game on! <laughs> Left-wing activist group Get Up is spending more than 190000 in a campaign to unseat Immigration Minister Peter Dutton. Uh, correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were looking for true, so... Oh, well. Uh, yes! yes. <laughs> Where did the money come from? People who support Get Up. Uh, crowdfunding donations. <laughs> Which Specifically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you don't have their names, you don't get the point. <laughs> Which independent senator recently posted a video of himself using a lever action shotgun? <gasps> was it David Longhine? No. Longhine? Yes. Was it Ricky Muir? Yes! Oh. Name the partly autobiographical book written by Tony Abbott in 2009. <laughs> 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 it's Battle Nights. Beautiful. In what town or city is Clive Palmer's now defunct Queensland uh -huh. nickel refinery? This, uh, I, there was an overshot. I apologise. <laughs> Left? I gotta say Townsville. Yes, beautiful! <laughs> what were the names of the two dogs Johnny Depp controversially? Uh, to the right? Pistol? No. No? <laughs> Remember when we said it was a lightning boo. round? Boo. Yeah, boo pistol! <laughs> <laughs> this is the slowest lightning. <laughs> if you got struck by this, you deserve it. <laughs> How many prime ministers have been born in South Australia? <laughs> One. Who was it? Killer. No, shoot. Bob Hook. Yeah. <laughs> 
Which Liberal MP has the nickname Mr. Bojangles? <laughs> to the right. Neil Diamond? <laughs> Independent, you got any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> to the right, uh, it was Andrew Rock. Okay, last question. According to a poll conducted in late uh, June 2014, what percentage of Australians support marriage equality? Closest to the correct answer. 78. Oof. <laughs> Take your guess. 80. No, uh, no, 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 no. It was, no. I think it was 72. Spot on! Oh. Tonight's winners are, we had Duncan, our independent, on zero points. <laughs> In a solid second, we had the right on 14 points. <laughs> and let's just leave tonight's winners. Give it up for the left on 20. <laughs> Please thank our team captains, Patrick McCaffrey and Mike Clemson. Yeah. And secretly breathing from his balloon full of sulfur dioxide, our independent alien, Duncan Turner. Yeah. And please give an extra special big round of applause for our special guest tonight, James McCann and Greens MLC, Tammy Frank. Yeah. extra games from tonight's show or catch up on past episodes, head to Channel 44's website at c44.com.au and we'll be back next week and it will be our final episode. So if you want to join us here in the audience, it's heaps of fun, isn't it guys? Yeah. All you need to do is visit adelaidecomedy.com. My name's been Laurie Bell. See you next time at the Rockers Court. Yeah.